My next idea for a Florida novel was the one called Angel City. And that's the story of a really horrendous situation in a migrant labor camp out from Homestead down in the very southern part of the state. Well, here again, I face the same situation. I had never in my lifetime been inside of a migrant labor camp, and I knew absolutely nothing about that way of life. So here I go again. I went to a Goodwill store and I bought an old raunchy pair of brogan shoes, some old blue jeans with holes in them and a chambray shirt. And I went down there and passed myself off as a migrant worker. And over a period of a year, all the time again, I could get away from my job, I spent down there with those people. I went out in the field with them. I picked tomatoes, squash, cucumbers, beans, and all that good stuff so I could really understand that way of life well enough to write about it. I almost quit that venture a thousand times. And it wasn't because of any lack of communication. It was just pure physical torture. There's just no way anyone can imagine what life is like for a migrant worker unless they live it. But sometimes when you're writing fiction based on real people in real life situations, you might have to do some things that you otherwise would never do. But some good did come from that novel. It was made into a movie with that same name, Angel City, and it was a CBS television movie. And right after it was first shown on national television, it created such an uproar that it led to editorials being written in newspapers all over the United States and Florida, demanding that that sort of a thing come to an end. So that led to the passage of about a dozen brand new laws regulating migrant labor camps and migrant labor crew chiefs. So it did some good for people who were unable to help themselves. 